And so it was a whole lot of shield got built up by TSM, and that massively diminishes the returns that you get from the crystal power. So Yeah, they're going to take Larry here and then potentially open up. Um, they're going to probably take Idris and ban Baron or leave Baron over, but they don't want to give Baron Lyra over to TSM. So let's see if the Cloud9 is going to take the Baron into a Lyra composition here. Yeah, and you can see Cloud9 banning away that Grace as well. They saw the sheer power of Grace coming out from Flash X last game. They don't want to deal with that again. Idris is going to be the first pick here for Cloud9. That means Baron suddenly not really a pick that TSM can come They should still ban for. Baron though, because Baron's Lyra is still very strong. And Idris gets disabled his abilities when the Bulwark is up, and it's going to heal Baron. So. I still think Baron is a smart ban here. Um, yep. That they're going to go ahead and take away the Baron. Now TSM will probably ban either Kashka or Grumpjaw because that's a really strong combo with Idris there. They can push a lot of uh, early game aggression. Idris can go CP, Grumpjaw can go weapon. So I think TSM, based on their draft history, they normally ban Grumpjaw in the second phase if it's not already banned. So let's see what they decide here. Yeah, a few options available for them in TSM. They're sitting comfortably at this stage. They obviously have to play these drafts still well. They still have to go in confident and playing at their best, but they're in a good spot. And Ooh, she's going to bat away Taka. I think Taka because they want to play a mage potentially, or or maybe a squishy like Ringo or Gwen into Idris. Batiste also open, and we've um, seen Bunsi loves Batiste. Yeah, but Batiste is good into Taka though. So the Taka ban, it, it, to me, is very interesting like what are they trying to pick there? They're trying to pick something squishy maybe a crystal kestrel probably potentially and play the poke game yeah they want to probably play lyra with double range poke i'm assuming so arden may be picked up by cloud nine here or even potentially kath but i think arden or kath would make sense i would like to see kath yep gabe's gonna pick kath because if they pick kestrel gabe's gonna completely counter that yeah and we saw gabe play this last game as well he's exceptional on that catherine we'll see what the option is now for tsm as you say the Kestrel kind of off the table, and it feels like with the Takaban, that was the way TSM yeah, were leaning. Yeah, very smart. And now Kath pick. Now you can't really pick a Kestrel. A Kestrel would re re struggle really hard until a Catherine pick there. So they have Batiste open, uh, which is good to like, or even Rhyme into. But Rhyme, if they pick Rhyme, the Cloud9 is going to pick Sky, and that's during a counter, so Rhyme will not come out. But I think Unless Batiste, Sammy will come Sky out. Rhyme. But they do a Dodge or Glaive again and yeah. try like a, a double heal comp composition again. That may work. They may try that again. I, I don't um, know if that would be a great idea though, just because the Idris uh, very likely is just going to be able to go into a poison shiv and you know makes the the double heal not quite as effective. I mean, they were very close to turning that oh, game around. They are going to grab the glaive and then, though. Is this a Dajio or is this like a Scarf? Like, he's not going to play Scarf. Could be a Dajio, um, but I think yeah, Dajio or Scarf would make the most sense here. Or even CP Ringo. They may do a CP Ringo here, honestly. Uh, so let's see what comes up for Chuck. What does Chuck want to lane? Oh, they're going to lane Glaive and the Sky into the cat. Wow. All right, bold picks from TSM. We've seen them go with bold picks that's in the past, That's why they banned though. Taka. This isn't the like first time. Take Sky. So that's Sky or Kestrel. So now, uh, Ozo may be a good pick for Cloud9, honestly, because they need a hero that can get onto that Sky or Grumpjaw. They can do Grumpjaw, Kashka, and you have a, a double stun. Catherine's stun with the Kashka. Play really aggressive early and shut the sky down. Let's see what they decide. But Kashka may look good or Grumpjaw here, potentially. But they need to snowball, though. That's the only thing about yeah, I that. wouldn't actually be very thrilled about a Grumpjaw pick here. I think Sky does really well against Grumpjaw. Uh, it's going to be Kashka, though. So Kashka, Idris looking for that hard, hard yes. dive composition. This is an incredibly aggressive composition out of Cloud9. They are looking to make things happen in this game. TSM, they're going to be the ones kind of defending their title and defending themselves during the early game as well. Cloud9, they're going to have to make things happen here with this composition. How are we expecting this game to plan out then? Can Cloud9 put on that early aggression that they're going to need to here? Yeah, they're going to have to with Catherine and Kashka. That's a really nice combo that can lock down the sky take her out and then snowball. So I think Cloud9 can take this game as long as they, they got a snowball. I think this one's going to go TSM. The Kashka is very strong early on, but once the Frostburn comes out, it's going to be really difficult for this Kashka to get onto a target and stick on the target. That's going to be the big concern for me is their ability to stick. Idris and Kashka yep. both have one jump each, and once that's down, it's going to be difficult. 
All right, we'll see if they can kite this one out, whether Cloud9 can look them down and finish them off. Cloud9 versus TSM is the matchup on our hands. Hashtag Vainglory8 is how you can let us know who you are supporting, who you want to go to the finals here at the Vainglory8. But it's time to jump on to the Halcyon Fold for the second game of the semi final. Thank you very much, guys. And can TSM still go undefeated with Cloud9 just not hesitant to pull the trigger, but just could not find the big all engages they needed last game? They got a Koshka this time around. We'll see how they do. Yeah, and this kind of plays more to Joseph's strength. I've always seen Joseph as similar to the Von C, a big playmaking early game jungler. You know, he likes to get the aggression in the early game. He likes to be able to run away with things. Kestrel can do that, but it's not quite the sort of style that. I'm used to seeing Joseph play as Bonzi on Sky, though. It's been a while, I think, since I've seen him play this. This will be a very interesting game for TSM because Best Chuck NA will be the one running with the Koshka, uh, with the um, Glaive this time round. In the laning phase, you know, he's going to be looking to put pressure on Old School, which, you know, realistically, this is a matchup that Idris doesn't fare as well in because it's a big, bruisery type weapon power hero. Gla you know, Idris like to have those squishier targets to land the big Shakrams on. It would be better the best Chuck and A in his laning phase versus uh, old school here. Bit of relieving of pressure, I think you could say. Relieved a little bit. But Flash X, I mean, coming up against Joseph on this Koshka is this bright bulwark. That's the target you want to hit on it, right? You want to make sure she cannot jump onto Von C, cannot jump onto best Chuck. I mean, it's Joseph's one of his signature carries. Very aggressive in the jungle role. We'll see how it makes it work. At the moment, Gabe Vizzle is just holding his hand through this jungle, getting them farmed up well, nice and tightly. It's going to be important. We'll see if they want to go for a little invade here, like TSM were doing all game last time. Flash X now playing the opposite role. He's actually sitting in the lane up here with us, Chuck. Interesting. I think what they look to be doing is maybe pushing themselves all to level 6 super quickly. Uh, and that means Gabe Vizzle, Joseph, and everything will hit level 6 at the same similar time. And then they will pull the trigger then. Remember, Koshka is kind of a level 6 boss. She hits level 6. You know, she looks to use that ultimate as quickly as possible uh, and just get onto a target. We've got a bit of a trade in the lane here. Gabe Vizzle being aggressive. He is level 3 already. Two points in the uh, Merciless Pursuit as well. Yeah, once we had to stack up nice... Nice and nice and high, so he just gets a lot of extra free stats later on. We did last time, I think it was on about 35, I counted, 35, 36. So he was pretty tanky. Uh, free, free stats are always nice things, you know. That's uh, important for Gabe Vizzle. Every time we see him go in, off cooldown, Mercer's Pursuit, Mercer's Pursuit, landing them time and time again. Doesn't matter who they're on, it's building up for the later game. Speaking of the later game, let's have a look at TSM's late one. We've got Von C. He's on this sky, like you said. Not a pick we usually see from him now. How do you think it's going to actually fare against someone like Old School in these fights? Well, Idris typically is pretty good at sticking to these more mobile targets. It all depends on the use of Old School's ultimate. You kind of want to use it just before a, a predicted Suri Strike, and then you can then jump out following the Suri Strike and stick to the sky. But if you do mistime it and you don't stick to the sky, she can kind of juke you quite easily with that Suri Strike. So Old School will have to be really good in the timing of his A and his ultimate to make sure that he's sort of getting in the right positions at the right time to stick to Sky, who is, you know, fairly, fairly mobile. We'll have Frostburn built up as well as Flesh X forced to use the boots to get out of there. Pressure's starting to mount in the laning phase now. Yeah, with that small roam from Joseph, really shows what he can do on that hero in terms of elevating the pressure on TSM. Best Jack had to use the afterburn as well. Flesh X. Not too bothered. Can heal himself while that sigil. There you go. All nice and healthy again. And now Von C. Maybe it's his time to pay a little bit of attention to this lane. It will be hard to lock down members of Cloud9 unless Best Chuck gets his hands on them. And I like TSM's adaptability as well. There's so many of these players that can play these various heroes in different roles. Obviously, we saw Von C. with the Glaive last time, and now it's in Best Chuck's hands. I was going to take a little bit of damage there. Von C's actually going to meet him in the lane, but Joseph is going to be here as well. Does them know this? They are just going to send him back to the jungle. Now, <laughs> best Chuck just getting pounced on time and time again. This is uh, Flash X doing a great job of alleviating the pressure in the lane, though, here, Jaws. That's what Lyra can do, and Flash X is so gifted with Lyra as well. It's one of his, you feel like he's talked about it, one of his favorite heroes to be able to play. We've just been able to keep Best Chuck and A very safe. And I do like what C9 are doing. They are they're making this laning phase easier on old school as well by grouping up and applying pressure on over and over. 
Joseph about to hit level six, and you can see Von C already working towards a reflex work because of the importance to have that by the time that Koshka hits level six. Wondering if Beshek will do the same though. He doesn't really have any free item slots to make that happen, although it has gold that he can use if he sells up. Yep, okay, double reflex block around the level six of Koshka. This is an absolute necessity. Something that, you know, uh, TSM as a team have been preaching as well. So now they shouldn't be caught out. It's whether Gabe Izzel can bait it out with his, uh, with his stun, however. And we'll have to wait and see, because that stun is on a very short cooldown. Regardless of that, I mean, they can still jump in. They they don't have to use that Koska ultimate. You can just use that pouncy fun, the twirly death, to do get that little bit of AoE damage on TSM. So, blowing that reflex block is going to be key for now, Gabe Vizzle to get down. But if not, you know, they can still engage on it. And the reluctance of TSM not wanting to use those cooldowns is going to be a key for T9 to pay, uh, pay off as well. Now, old school once more, just pressuring in this lane. Gabe Vizzle taking commanding control of that mustache brush and a big power spike has been hit from joseph as well as he does find von c in the jungle but with that aftershock he's going to want to make some plays he's going to want to make them now again though with the double reflex block coming out it might be harder than it seems to get the koshka into a playmaking area it's going to be up to gabe bizzle to put pressure on force the reflex block with the stun and then for, for joseph to follow up Monsi is yet to hit his first item. He's working likely towards a frost burn here on this sky. We'll need about 300, 250 more gold before he can achieve that. On rotation, he might be able to pick that up when he heads towards the jungle shop. Probably going to have to wait for his back to spawn to really achieve it. But again, by going for the reflex blocks, you do delay your power spikes. But it will keep you safe. Yeah, it's better not to die and then just reach your power spikes later on. Old school now. Now rotating down towards the fronts of TSM. They're going to spot out the elder, well, the tree ain't even. They're actually just going to spot out the other little minions. They're going to be able to take those away. Now TSM. They are on the aggression here. They have all been spotted out. And that <laughs> cap actually going towards Von C. Does use that four barrage to steal it. Or secure it. It's his jungle. It's his jungle. It's, just, it's not a steal. It's your own jungle. He does secure it. Picks up the frost burn. Frost burn again. Really good into Catherine. Something that we didn't talk about, by the way, is that application of Sky into Catherine. Sky's four barrage does not do enough damage per tick to prop Immense the storm shield of the Catherine. Collected. So therefore, you know, just it's very, very easy to get consistent damage on Catherine without punishing your own teammates. It's one of why a lot of people pick CP Sky into Catherine because of that exact reason. Also means you can kite her, stop her landing those merciless pursuits with the frost burn and the forward barrage. Makes it more difficult for her to find those team fights and those engages. So now that's been picked up for Von C. It's a good time for TSM to search for some battles. But by pure CS alone as it stands and jungle dominance, that 1,500 gold lead opened up for C9. And that's because TSM have been on the back foot through just pure compositional strength. And not only that, C9 did secure the gold miner a few seconds sure, ago as well, yeah. straight under TSM noses. So mm. it's they, just... they can't respond to it though, yeah. that's, that's the issue, they just can't respond to it. Well, speaking of not being able to respond, <laughs> there's Chuck, face checks the brush, ace for it as well. Face checks is going to heal him up with the sigil. Joseph may be looking for a little bit of an in here. But you can see TSM's posturing now towards the top side of that turret to make it even harder for Joseph to actually make a forward play, a proactive play. Now positioning himself towards that top side, Best Chuck's actually going to get found here and Flash, Flash X is going to get stunned up by Gabe Vizzle, that Merciless Pursuit finding its mark this time. Again, but nothing huge for C9 here, not able to capitalise on Koshka's early game, she's been farming more than anything and whilst that's good, you just know that Sky is going to outscale this Koshka eventually, lots of damage onto... Oh my goodness, he's just going to go down instantly, first blood, straight up to old school, and that's going to be jumping straight on top of Flash X as well, he's going to be able to get out of there, nice! Nice ultimate there coming through from Von C, stunning up one member, Gabe Bizzle. And now, I know Joseph's in a lot of trouble, does use that fancy phone on that turret to get a little bit of distance. Flash X using that passageway to actually escape the kitten's claws. Nice pick up onto Best Chuck, will secure them first blood. And they're trying to go for this turret as well, just focusing completely on it. But TSM just trying to pick them off because they know Best Chuck's coming. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to find anything. That four barrage actually stunning up old school, slowing them up. In fact, that's the stun, that's the kill. Von C finds one. C9 now just escaping with two of their lives remaining, but still taking that first turret. Best Chuck and A has also learned his lesson. Too much damage hanging up for Joseph there as he's gone for the shielding. 
Von C, by the way, has been a monster this series. That play there by stunning up Gay Bizzle, isolating Joseph, bought TSM enough time not to defend their first tier turret, but at least to get some sort of return in the form of a kill onto old school. But right now, C9 thoroughly in the driving seat, and it hasn't really been through anything major in terms of plays that they've made. Yes, they made a good play on the gold mine, they made a good play onto the tier one turret, but they haven't run away with things catastrophically. It's been TSM's reluctance to move out of their own jungle, especially Von C, really been restricted to his back camps for the most part, occasionally finding his forward healing tree on. He's just been afraid to duel Koshka in the early game, which as a Sky is thoroughly within reason, because Koshka is very dominant against Sky before she gets that maxed up Suri strike. Von C now is at overdriven Suri strike, resets the cooldown of forward barrage, and also is on a very, very short cooldown. Now Cloud9 once more, assuming control the mid Invincible portion of the jungle. Another gold miner is going to go over. Another 200 gold bounty paid over to each one of them. Cashing in. Going to be... Uh, that's an extra 400 gold through and through for each member after those two gold miners were taken. Death and Rub does come down. Joseph jumps over the wall. The flash is going to be there with the bright pool watch to dissuade him. Once more TSM. Very happy to kind of face Joseph, but getting picked off one by one has been their, been their crux at the moment. Like what Gabe Bizzle has done here, he's gone for a contraption. Really good at dominating vision when you're ahead, but also has the double synergy of Catherine function, functioning so well with cooldown reduction, allows him to stack very quickly, brings things off cooldown more readily in these team fight situations. So I really like that pickup from Gabe Bizzle, because obviously they've been able to dominate the gold mine by having pure vision control that TSM has not been able to clear because of how afraid they have been of finding uh, C9 and going for a full on three versus three. Flash has to be careful here as Gabe Bizzle moves in, but will be able to escape quite nicely. It is now a 3,000 gold lead over to C9, but this is what we felt like it was going last game, you know. If there was the C9 opening an advantage towards the middle portion of the game, and TSM finally found their way back in towards the late. Again, I think a lot of this is going to come down to Von C's personal performance here. He is going to be on one of the sort of linchpins. It's going to be giving over the sentry again. TSM unable to respond to C9 making these really aggressive plays on the map, and that's something that is worrying for TSM, because if they give up too much, They'll have to work too hard to find a recuperation. But Vonsi's now picked up his Broken Myth, so that's a big item spike for them to use. Really? Especially with um, Cloud9 just running at him. <laughs> it's very terrifying for him in that scenario. But now, with Vonsi stacking up those items, what? Where, did, where does it become a point where he is going to be fed, or he is going to be at the point where he can face off against Old School and Joseph. We really want him to get that. I think that now is good, but he should ideally want that Eve of Harvest, and then suddenly, you know, through clever positioning and use of his forward barrage, should be able to sustain up through the damage. Well, you know, Old School hasn't really found an inroad in these fights, but he's almost nearly hit late game build. He's actually going towards the breaking point, which is traditionally what you tend to see Idris's pick up when they go for uh, a bruiser matchup, like against a double melee, or even just against Best Chuck, who's going to be on the front line for TSM. So he'll be looking to stack and then commit to the sky. If he was looking to burst the sky outright with the Koshka, you would expect him to go towards the tension bow, which is actually something that I felt would probably have been the better choice here. I would have maybe preferred to see him go for the Tension Bow, but I guess he assumes that he's going to be locked into a duel with Best Chuck, so therefore the, the ability to build the Breaking Point stacks and then find Sky after he's already built them is probably more influential for him. Cloud9 going to get another free gold miner because of the vision control that the Gables has got because of that contraption and the fact they are just so far ahead in terms of map pressure, TSM unable to respond. It's a very old school TSM play, Super Turtle-like as well. Well, old school has finished his Breaking Point now. Three gold miners from T uh, for C9. Massive advantage in terms of gold. They're 4,000 ahead now. Might not seem like a lot, but again, that's another tier three item for one of the C9 members. Uh, Flash X trying to dissuade C9 for going to this crystal sentry. Use the minion candy on it here. Just buffed it up a little bit, making it a bit more of a sort of a fourth member of the team rather than half a member of the team in these team fight situations around the jungle. But I really like what C9 are doing. They're pushing every advantage that they can. They're just saying, okay, you're not going to fight us. We'll take every safe haven you have away from you, which is including that Crystal Miner. And now Gay Bizzle's going to solo it out, or, or try and solo it out, it looks like, as uh, Flash X comes to respond. Now it's got the minion candy. has actually popped it on, but won't stand against three members of Cloud9, who just end up securing it. Only one life remaining on that sentry now. TSM slowly getting choked out by C9. And TSM are just letting this happen as well. They have done nothing realistically in terms of bad plays, no face checks really. They've had no bad team fights, but they are just reluctant to fight C9. 
I guess they are waiting for that three item spike that Monty has now hit, but there's only so much space you can give to a team like C9 because they will just run away with it. There is a uh, scout trap there, so they do realize that C9 are always stacking in that brush, and again, they were reluctant to do anything with it. I don't know what TSM are waiting for. Are they waiting for um, the Atlas to be finished with Flash X? Are they waiting for Best Check to finish his Tension Bow? Is it is they still really trying to play around their late game spikes? They're trying to turtle as hard as they can? They need to get some control back here. Because, you know, we saw how quickly Idris can take things like Kraken. TSM just let this happen. That's going to be tough for them, and I think that this is the right move by C9. They are saying, you are not fighting us. Let's, let's bring you to us. And Von C heads back here. This is a... Oh, my God. They're just going to give Kraken away. They are just giving Kraken away because this, they, they just they feel that they cannot fight for it. TSM have just... Has this been PvE for Cloud9 so far? Been in what it was. One and one. That's it. Kraken's going to go over to Cloud9. They end up just taking out that Crystal Sentry who's going to respawn once more. This is his last life. Minion can he use, but again, C9 just whittling it down. Von C reluctant to join this engagement. And now Cloud9 forcing this fight. Joseph jumping forward. Nice use of the Blast Tremor, silencing three members of TSM. They do get the start to old school, and now Joseph jumps back in once more. That Massive ultimate block on the step from above from Von C. And now Flash X is going to find himself old school. He is going to be able to secure that kill if he's not careful. Oh, Von C, the god! Oh my god, Von C. Suri striking over the wall does find one kill. Joseph now is going to oh, jump no. on him. Twirly death and a basic attack will finish off the kill. There comes the ultimate from Joseph. He finds the double kill. He finds the ace. The Kraken's still on the board as well. Cloud9. They've just pulled the plug on TSM. Yeah, but TSM had just given them this. They didn't, even make, they didn't even make C9 work for it. They were so reluctant to even try and find an engage in the early game. I don't know what they were scared of. I think it was the Koshka Sky matchup potentially, but they did nothing. They let C9 get away with this. C9 have had to work for none of this lead because they have just farmed it up. They've taken neutral objective after neutral objective. They have been un almost uncontested, taking the Crystal Miners. Once he almost had that fight, he tried to lock on, I think, to I Love Joseph to get the Suri strike, but unfortunately misclicked and walked towards him. Which then gave I Love Joseph the k killing blow. But I, I don't know. The SM have been passive. Really passive, and that is unlike them. Maybe it's because Vonsi's not on a very early game playmaking hero. Maybe you, you should not give him these late game scaling heroes. Leave Best Chuck to be the late game scaling carry. Give Von C the playmaking heroes, because it doesn't look like this is the formula that gives TSM that winning mojo. Or bad mojo. Have that Batiste come back. Thank you. That was a, a pleasure to watch, in all honesty, with Von C making plays with Batiste. I'm not seeing it in this matchup, he is more of the damage dealer, and Best Chuck's more of the setter upper, like you were saying. Chris is going to dive in again. That's going to be a bright bulwark down, which means he can jump straight to Bonsi. Bonsi is just melting. He has rubbed us come down. He ends up just going down instantly as well. Flash X gets jumped on with the ultimate from, well, Yummy Candy Frenzy, that is, from Joseph. Old School is now just going to chase Flash X away. Did use the passage to get over the wall. And you can see Best Chuck just couldn't make any damage stick. Has to just go for this recall here. We'll end up going back to the base with Flash X. Mm. Bonsi just gets jumped on as soon as that bright bulwark goes down. And C9 just walking all over TSM. Stark contrast to what happened first game. I think Death from Above needs to come out instantaneously. I know Von C tried to play around the Death from Above and use the line to then Suri Strike Pass, making it difficult for C9 to follow up, but it was far too late. He'd already received those lethal doses of damage. Again, I, I, I much prefer Best Chuck on the carry late game hero, the one that is supposed to be the mechanical powerhouse in terms of the damage output. Have Von C on something that can make plays. Yes, Sky can make plays, but she is so susceptible, especially to this composition from C9. Everything on the C9 composition screams good against Sky in some way, although obviously Catherine, we know the, the, the sort of counter there, we know that once the Frostburn comes down, but it relies on Von C making plays. If Von C isn't protected, stun limits his mobility. Joseph can keep up with him with the speed and old school can stick to him like glue. They haven't lost a single turret yet either. Cloud9 doing a fantastic job against TSM. TSM now. They used that death from above on a very short cooldown. A Kraken was started from Cloud9 as well, but they did disengage to maybe look for a small engage here. And 
Now the stun does land. Old school opens the side here. You can see he just wants to find Von C. Nice reposition there from Best Chuck. Found it to out. This is really good for them. Now Von C is going to use that death rebuff. The Best Chuck and A just gets taken out first off. Joseph, got to be careful. Von C is going to come forward. He's going to find that passageway through. This is going to be really good for Von C. Getting a lot of free damage down to Old School as well. They trade one for one in that regard. And now it's Von C in Game Fizzle's face. We'll just be able to just chunk him out with that forward barrage. Death and Rebuff doesn't quite connect, but just going to chase him down with the Surrey Strikes. He's going to ignore that Crystal Sentry. He's going to find the Ace, but when will he do it? And in fact, actually, it's oh, wait a, a second. second here. Crystal Sentry doing a lot of damage. It's actually going to save Game Fizzle. Almost a reverse Ace there. Almost double Ace even. Von C finally finds the kill. Gets the Ace Regeneration buff and is going to walk to lane. Yeah, I don't think it'll be anything going for worth, worth crack inside because uh, TSM Sky very, very bad at taking Kraken, but should be able to get at least a turret from this engage. Bonsi there was a god, okay? I mean, I did criticize potentially that I liked the roles the other way around. Right there, Bonsi was a god. Single-handedly set that fight up so nicely, even despite the late fountain coming up from Flash X. Best Chuck and A went down. He did get a lot of good early game, early damage in that team fight, but that was all Bonsi, the Bonsi show. Built up so many stacks on his broken myth, great death from above placement, and the chase down potential was so strong. That's the kind of area that TSM like to fight in though, Jaws. If you walk through a choke point, you've got to remember that Sky has a vector on her death from, uh, from her forward barrage, and that's what she has to stick to when she chooses to, to fire it. If you walk down a firing line like that jungle lane, wait a second. Oh, Joseph does get found out in the jungle trying to take his front camps. TSM now, now they're pressuring Cloud9. Maybe they've got that gusto that they needed. That one team fight has gone in their way, and now they're deciding, actually, we can fight Cloud9. That's exactly what we want to do right now. Aegis has completed on Von C. He's got a bit of armor to his name as well, so he's got a little bit tankier. Not so easy to take down for the C9 roster. And if TSM can bring C9 to the scenario that you can see here, where Von C basically is given a free firing line, that's really, really good for TSM. I think C9 have got a good idea of trying to push the lane and bring TSM up to the lane because if they can fight them in the lane area, that's that's an excellent place for C9 because it makes it harder for Von C to position his shots as easily. Well, they're trying to go for a small engagement here. Best Chuck's on the front line, but does manage to disengage there. Old School is now completely isolated. He might just be the first casualty of this war, but Joseph's going to dash forward. He's going to find that 20 death kill yeah, onto Best Chuck. Yeah. And now that Suri Strike's doing a lot. Von C ends up trading up one there, or at least trying to on Old School. Flash X is down. Von C might be just next if he's not careful. Death from above is going to keep Cloud9 separated from him, but he's too oh, he's low, still going. I think, to care. He's still he's going. He's going to find the kill onto Joseph, but he's all stunned up. Old School needs to be able to find this final blow. Gabe oh. is all trying to work towards him. That shield just disintegrating Von C. That's going to be the complete ace here from Cloud9. They might just end the game. They should be able to end the game here. I don't think TSM have got enough time to respond. It's going to be very close. Got to give credit where credit's due. C9 change up the tactics and focus best. Chuck take him out very quickly before Von C can build up those stacks. And it proved excellent here. Best Chuck should respawn, as will Flash X. It'll be a fight to try and burst down Old School, but I think this should be an easy game win now for C9. Yeah, Old School's going to dip, duck, dive, and dodge around that crystal. It's going to be fairly easy for them, you can imagine. There comes the Blast Drummer, there comes the Silence, there comes the game. Cloud9 will tie this series up one to one. A really, really nice change of pace for C9 in that last fight. Took Best Chuck NA out as the priority target before Von C had the chance to build the Broken Myth stack, something that was so integral to the way that he was winning these team fights. The, I, I, look, DSM are not a, not a team that gives up the early game like that, and that was 15 minutes of giving everything on the map to C9.